In this video, application engineer Austin Claybrook is going to give us a quick demo of the rendezvous and proximity operation sequences in SDK Astrogator. Over to you, Austin. Today I'd like to introduce some RPO sequences that we have as a new feature to SDK. As of SDK 12, we've had these sequences and it really allows you to do some of these complex relative orbit and proximity operation sequences with inside Astrogator without having to be an expert um, in all the technical details. It also allows you to just really rapidly, quickly build some missions with only high-level parameters. Um, and today I'd like to walk you through an example of a geo rendezvous satellite mission. Um, as you see here on the left-hand side, we're going to have an RPO satellite that's going to be moving across the geo belt. It's going to start a drift. It's going to rendezvous with the target geo satellite. Uh, from there, it'll do some hops. It'll enter into a um, natural motion circumnav, so it's going to circumnavigate the target. Um, it's going to be using some force motion, maintaining certain perch points relative to the target, um, all accounting for differential forces between the two targets, and then exit the target. So here is a high-level summary of that uh, mission that we're going to be planning here, starting off with the RPO. So I'm going to go ahead and start uh, by zooming to the RPO, the RPO start. Uh, and this is what it's going to look like. And then I will actually walk through this mission over here on the right-hand side with the actual new MP. MCS segments of the RPO sequences themselves. So to start off, we're going to need to define, you know, where is our satellite? Before we even do that, uh, we're actually going to set the reference. Um, so one of the common sequences is a set reference vehicle here, and it has some high-level parameters. So as a user, you're really going to only need to interact with these high-level parameters unless you're doing something very custom. Uh, so it asks, who am I? I'm going to be this RPO satellite. Um, and then the reference vehicle is going to be the chase satellite. Um, so I'm actually going to go ahead and turn on this chase satellite, and you'll see that this chase satellite is indeed where my RPO satellite starts, uh, because my next sequence right here is setting the initial state. So I set my reference to be a chase satellite, and then in the initial state, I say, okay, go ahead and start where that chase satellite is. So really just using the chase satellite as a seed for the initial conditions for my RPO satellite here. So that's going to be the first step. Um, the next step is going to be update the spacecraft parameters. Um, we're this is, we're going to modify the default parameters to change them to be um, two for this coefficient of reflectivity, whereas our target rendezvous satellite um, has a coefficient of reflectivity of one. Um, and so since our coefficient of reflectivities are different and our masses and everything else happens to be the same in this example, we're going to experience different solar radiation pressure. And because of that, if we're not actively maintaining um, point, if we're trying to hold there or during our transfers, uh, our satellites are going to naturally drift away from each other. So we're going to have a different size spacecraft rendezvousing with our target. That would be um, normal in many situations or for these RPO missions. So we're going to count for that. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is just go ahead and coast. So we're going to coast for two days here in the beginning. Um, and you can see that orbit here. So all the orbits are being drawn relative to the target, except for this green one right here, which is the target uh, itself, the target trajectory itself. So we have our RPO satellite. Um, we're going to go ahead and drift for two days. I'm going to go ahead and set my animation time to the end of that drift. So I have drifted two days. That's with this coast segment. Uh, and the way that coast segment works is you have a duration you set for. Um, you can also, there are some other options for this coast segment. Uh, you can change it to be revs and the coast condition. Um, in this case, we're using a coast definition of duration. But if I were to change this to be revs, I could coast for a certain number of revs and a certain number of apogees or perigees, um, if I were to change this coast definition to um, apogee. It really just makes setting up some of these sequences a little bit easier. Uh, you could traditionally do this in Astrogator by going into this propagate segment and changing the duration or the apoapsis or periapsis or the number of revs um, as a stopping condition for the duration. Uh, but what these sequences do is they wrap up all those underlying MCS segments and targeters and different correctors, all those sorts of things into these high-level sequences to allow you to build your mission much more quickly. All right, after the coast, we're going to set our reference vehicle to be the V-bar. Uh, the V-bar happens to be just an offset, so I'm going to turn on the V-bar. If you look at the target over here, uh, you'll see that the V-bar in the background is going to turn on. I'm going to turn off the target just so you can see it. Uh, it happens to be right next to the target. Uh, the V-bar representing... Um, a offset in the in-track direction, uh, in the velocity direction, that's where the name V-bar comes from, from the target. It's going to be about a kilometer um, behind the target. 
So we are going to set a reference vehicle to be the V-bar. Again, we're using that reference vehicle as a point we want to rendezvous to, and then we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, so this next sequence right here is a geo to geo rendezvous sequence where you had some high level parameters of three degrees per day in this case. You pick the engine type you want to use. So these sequences support finite, uh, impulsive and finite maneuvers, which is really exciting. Um, it allows you to do these really complicated things, and it's not just simple force models. Using full force models, differential force models, um, realistic maneuvers uh, for these satellites. So you can have um, impulsive or finite uh, maneuvers here. So I'm going to go ahead and set the time to the end of this transfer. Um, so a lot happened right there. Uh, if I look back here for the at the trajectory, um, the spacecraft actually entered this higher orbit in the geo belt and drifted towards this target. Uh, and then it performed a maneuver up here to come down and rendezvous right in front of the target here. Um, and if I return that V-bar right back on, you'll see I did indeed stop on this V-bar um, reference that we set. Okay, so I have this RPO sequence. It is now in be, uh, right behind the target actually, about one kilometer. The next thing we're gonna do is just wait, um, wait a little bit of time. So the maintain the V-bar right here. Uh, this waits about a day or so. Uh, on the V-bar, and it's going to maintain the V-bar position within five meters. Uh, so that's what this maintain max error is right here. Um, it also asks, once again, how do you want to maintain? What engine sequence do you want to use? Uh, and if I look in right here, because of the differential forces, you'll see this sort of flower pedal motion. Um, you basically these loops, and then every time I'm about to drift outside of that five meter box, I'm going to perform a maneuver to make sure I stay in it. So. Um, because, of, once again, because of the differential force models, the different sizes of our spacecraft, uh, we will have to actively maintain any sort of perch point or any location we want to maintain. Even if naturally, if everything were to match, um, from a force model perspective, this would be a stable point. But because they're different, we have to act actively maintain it. The next sequence we're going to do is a hop and stop. So instead of being uh, one kilometer away, we're going to move to 300 meters from the target. And once again, you give it some high level parameters here. Uh, in this case, I just say, I wanna be 300 meters behind the target. That's what this negative 300 is. And I want the radial and cross track components to be zero, as well as this hop duration. So we'll go ahead and set my animation time here. And then once again, I'm gonna maintain the V-bar. So that's gonna be my next sequence. If I wanted to investigate what happened in that hop sequence, um, it's going to be similar to sort of a Lambert's problem, but for relative motion. Uh, and if I look inside of this, you'll see that this hop and stop actually has, is composed of a target sequence with a burn, a propagate, and a stop for the burn. And this target sequence is gonna do a lot of things for you. Uh, it's basically going to run the scripting tool to set up some high level parameters based off what you chose with this hop and stop. Um, it's gonna either set up impulsive or a finite or it'll target with impulsive and actually seed to finite if you chose finite here. Otherwise, you'll just stop at impulsive. So it's going to set all the maneuvers to be impulsive or finite, as well as set up all the differential correctors to target those variables. Uh, so it's going to be doing a lot under the hood for you here, but that's just a quick deeper dive into one of these sequences. Uh, and from here, we're going to just go ahead and walk through the rest of the mission. Um, we have a natural motion circumnav. Uh, this one's a really cool sequence. It will take for wherever you are, it'll do the transfer. In this case, it's going to be using a force motion and kind of like skipping along this line, almost like a straight line to a per to a point to enter this natural motion circumnav. So it's going to be doing a series of small burns along this trajectory to then enter into this natural motion circumnav ellipse uh, defined with these high level parameters here. So if I wanted to jump, um, and actually animate this scenario here. I'm gonna to jump to the start of that entrance and go ahead and hit play. And you'll see the satellite move towards the start of that natural motion circumnav and it's doing small maneuvers along the way here. And then once it's there, it'll uh, insert itself into this natural motion circumnav. Uh, and this again is stable. Um, if there were no differential forces, but because they are, it will have to actually maintain this natural motion circumnav, which is the next sequence right behind it. Okay, from there, we're actually going to exit this natural motion circumnav. We're going to hop and stop to a location radially above the geosatellite. 
So I have a radial location of half a kilometer above the geosatellite. I'm going to go ahead and jump to that time. And then I just want to stay there. So after I, I've done my natural motion circumnav a number of times, I will hop and then perch myself above this target. And then I'm going to maintain this perch point, which is not a naturally stable point. So you're going to require maneuvers regardless of whether the force models match or not here uh, by doing a for a certain amount of duration by doing small maneuvers every so often and once again you can specify the max error here then after that we're just going to round off the scenario by letting this naturally coast away so if i were to set my animation time now i don't have to actually perform any maneuvers because this is not a naturally stable location i'm just going to naturally start drifting away um, from that geo satellite from my target over there so i will drift and then after a while i will go ahead and exit the vicinity of that target satellite um, by starting with this exit sequence right here. So I'm going to go ahead and jump to sort of the end of the scenario here. Um, there's my target. I performed a maneuver to actually exit away from that target, and then it's going to drift um, along the geo belt away. So I could go on and perhaps observe another target. All right, um, that's going to conclude today's demo. Thanks.